and um, it's in Far Rockaway. It's kind of like a bad neighborhood. And some black kid tried to uh, rob us with a knife. We're carrying pistols. They, we look like regular white people. Yeah. We're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turned out bad for him. We left him in a fucking puddle of blood. We left him for house, basically. He tried to take our sneakers, everything, with a knife. Not realizing we got guns on us and weapons. We, Bobby G. Pistol whipped him. Yeah, That's, you know, this is what I'm trying to say, how we were. You know, people don't realize we were dangerous dudes. Yeah. We're rocking with the... Oh, you ready? Ready to yeah. roll? Sorry. Let's go. We're rocking with the, the used to be just infamous, but now also famous... Gene Morello, out here in L.A. Um, so, <laughs> you had a run a while ago as uh, one of the first um, mafia guys to turn informant who then became a uh, social media celebrity. Right. And you and John Light had a hit show, but it got shut down kind of yeah. by the feds. Tell us about the, that process and the feds actually giving you a hard time. How did they implement the hard time with so what happened was <clears throat> when i got out i um which was what year i 2019 december 6th i got sentenced to time served literally when you get time served you walk out of the courthouse it's crazy you just boop walk out so i didn't know what i was going to do because i was used to making you know lots of street money and now i'm living a different life so johnny a light was very close with my aunt connie and family of mine before um back in the day so he heard i was getting out and he said listen tell genie boy to contact me I said, all right. So I call him up. So now I tell the prosecutors at first, I tell them, listen, I'm going to do an interview. I'm going on Vlad TV. They said, yeah, that's fine. They were okay with it. But they just... You just accompanied Eli. Yeah. So I, I didn't get my solo. He, he, he said, I'm going to bring you on to introduce you to everybody. You know, so everyone can know who you are. I said, all right. So I jump on, do small little things. And everyone's like, oh, shit, modern day. I didn't know this still went on. They <laughs> were guys were out, still running around like this. So... Then all of a sudden I blew up. People started asking me for interviews, all these things. I started getting all over the place, all over YouTube. And then I had this idea with Johnny. I says, listen, now remember, it was only Mike Francis and Johnny Light that was doing interviews at the time. So I'm like the third well, guy. This is pre-Sammy the Bull. Yeah, this is, yeah. Because so now, so now they, it's only them two. And then it's me now. And I says, let's do a podcast. Sit down, we'll bring guests. I think it'll blow up. We joked around at first and did... A pod, like an interview with me and him talking from a phone and got 250,000 views. So we knew it was going to be a hit. So we go into the studio and we start getting guests and doing everything where we messed up and we got the government mad. I did. Is remember, I'm on federal probation. So they own you. They have, they literally own you. So I can't sit with ex-cons and felons. Mm -hmm. So now here's the trick, how they got me. Um, we started bringing guests on. So we brought this guy, John Rubio, on. John Rubio wore a wire against the Genovese family. Now, when he wore the wire, he came on the show. He put a lot of guys away. And what happened was he said on the show, I made more money with the government than I did in the street. They didn't like that. The fucking judge, who's very strict in the Southern District, heard what he said. It was in the newspaper. It was going, our show was starting. Like, in other words, the government was... I mean, it's basically like it sounded bad. Like the government was paying him good. Like it just sounded bad. And so the judge literally lost it and to get his ass back in front of me. And he's on probation. So that opened up Pandora's box. So that's when they says, we want you off the air. I says, what do you mean? I'm doing the right thing. I'm not committing crimes no more. They started fighting with me about it. And John Rubio got house arrest. He ended up getting house arrest. They were going to put him in jail six yeah, months. for doing air. They were hitting us with contact because we're on probation. You can't be next to each other. That was the trick. And they didn't want us talking about organized crime and glorifying. It was, they just want this off the air. But we're in the Daily News once a week. They were, they were furious. Oh, so, so you guys were really... Popping. You are like big, big meat of yeah. uh, italian American. Yeah, so they were bugging out. that We were getting too much media attention. Then they realized that like people were glorifying us. We're getting mail from China, Japan, all over. Everybody's watching us. So the show blew up. And what happened was I slipped up. And I got into a little dispute with my ex-girlfriend's husband, but they were waiting for a slip up. So when I slipped up... So just what, like an argument? Yeah. No, I threatened to kill someone. And the problem was he went to the FBI and says, I'm scared for my life. It, it was bullshit. Talk, it was talk. It was bullshit. And they used that. And they violated me for that, but they didn't. They violated me for the Johnny and Gene show. They gave me stipulations of 50 stipulations that I couldn't talk about organized crime. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I mean, rules that you would die, like they were giving me. So they dismantled the show like that. That's how they got me. And they banned me from doing podcasts and from Instagram and everything until I was off probation. I, f I had to do 18 months in violations, plus restart my probation. When did that end? 
Oh, September. I just got done. Oh, Jesus. I just got done. And you spent a big chunk of your adult life in and out of prison. 13 years. So all these adventures we're going to talk about happened yeah. in a pretty short span of time. Yeah. So, okay. So to start, I'm interested in... I've been passed through Howard Beach and Benson Hurst and Ozone Park here right. and there in my life. Mm -hmm. And even just passing through them, interesting different kind of places. Right. They're suburb, well, I mean, they're part of New York. Like they're, you know, up middle blue collar areas with 700,000 million dollar houses. More. Where there's right. Like, you know, it's like a whole industry of like... Organized crime. Now, but when you were growing up, what percentage of the people in Howard Beach were Organized. not necessarily made, but somehow connected to... Fucking 80. Oh, 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 it was everybody. Oh, it was everybody. I mean, literally, the, the, the Howard, Howard Beach was probably known as the most corrupt suburb in the country. It was no, you, if you said Howard Beach, they knew what Howard Beach was in other states. No, but that was for that racist incident. No, because Gotti lived there. John Gotti lived there. Vicar Musa lived there. Joe Messina lived there. And Joey Scopa lived there. That's four bosses out of the five families in one 10-block mile radius neighborhood. What's growing up, I mean, where, did you have to walk on egg shit? Like yes, so that's funny. You, you're asking good questions, so let me tell you why. You get into a fight with a kid, you could be in the park, but I was related, so I didn't have that problem, but I've seen people get crippled over it. So you, you might be, um, for instance, you come to Howard Beach, you know, you're hanging out in the neighborhood, you're playing basketball, you get into a fight with a kid, you punch him in the face, all of a sudden... And you're it's, talking about 12, 13 years old. Oh, yeah, 14, 15, you punch a kid in the face, all of a sudden it turns out to be some skipper's son, some skipper's nephew. He comes home with a black guy. Now the fucking guy's furious. Go give that kid a fucking beating. Next day, you're at the park, you're getting fucking beaten in front By of everybody. Grown By grown men. So Slapped that, around, whatever. In, in the mafia stuff, a person, if they didn't know better, which most people don't, Oh, you know, everyone, we're just guys in suits and, yeah. you know, once in a while someone has to get killed. But there's a lot of, especially to even be at your status where they're looking at you, well, we might make you. It's run off of deadbeat people who borrow money to gamble and don't want to pay, low lives of various sorts who who haven't paid their credit card bills. Right. So that's why they came to you. So they you don't go. want to pay. There you go. So they got to know, <laughs> oh no, someone will come over and ram my yeah. head into the garage. Yes. Yeah, so like I said, and I'm glad you said that, we deal with a lot of the scum. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, what comes with that? You know, if you don't pay, we have to, what? We have to hurt you. We have to make it known that if you don't pay us, there has to be some kind of consequence and nobody's going to pay you. What what were the f women in the family like when you were a kid? Like okay, you got all these violent men and like people's kids getting beat up. Like, are the women like what, are they like the women on the Gotti? Like they're just down with it, or yeah, everyone's just used to it? Yeah, everyone's used to it, and most of the girls think they're men, and you know, or they might be related to somebody, so they grow up and believing in that life. You know, it's in that neighborhood. It's 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 our culture. It's almost like our culture. Do many people marry in, like, do people from there, if you were a kid from there and you went away to college, you probably wouldn't move back. If you were wanted to be normal, you wouldn't come back home. Right, right exactly. You know, and like I said, now the neighborhood's totally different, but I'm talking about the last hurrah, which was our era. Which is what year? You're talking early the two, early 2000s. You know, that's the last hurrah when people were getting shot and killed and crazy shit still going on. And um, now it's the violence is completely gone out of it but I remember coming up um you know and your mother had some relatives that were oh sure my uncle was fat Andy Ruggiano my oh, mom's godfather oh that's oh okay so so he was a uh, mob royalty yeah he was right. a, one of the most feared respected men uh of his he's era still he's dead no he died well, that's his son yeah right. it's his son yeah Anthony is my cousin and um he was a captain Anthony made uh, he was. Well, tactically, he was. He, he was told he could sit. It was just he didn't get to do his ceremony, but he tactically was. But his father and my uncle was... Um, so that was your mother's brother? Yeah, yeah. no, mother's first cousin. Okay. Yeah, and... Um, but he was a heavy hitter. He killed for Abba Anastasia. He goes back to the Murder, Inc. He was straightened out, made by Abba Anastasia. Oh, then wow. Don Carlo took him in after they killed Abba Anastasia. What was he like? Do you remember? Oh, sure. Childhood? Absolutely. Yeah. Did, if you didn't know better, would he have seemed normal or, or, or would you meet him and think? No, nah, he's a scary looking guy. Okay. Yeah. He was cool though, but scary looking but you guy. you got that vibe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You get that vibe, you know. Seems like, I mean, any, when I started meeting... Uh, Serious bikers and people that were either made in the mob or hangers on, they felt 
you know, you could tell, like, okay, no, you're not just a regular yeah. guy. There's some bad bikers, yeah, 100%. Oh, no, oh yeah. bikers are frightening. They're brutal. And what, what age <clears throat> did you, in your mind, think I'm going to be a criminal? A criminal or a gangster? Yeah, well, okay. What, Two difference. Two different things. Did, okay, so which happened first? Criminal. What age was that? 15, 16, I knew I was going to be a criminal. And what were you doing? This is what year is this? This is 99. So what, are you just dabbling, selling weed at high school? Petty shit, just petty, petty crimes, but violent. We, we were getting violent already. From the start? Yes. Is I that was, because you knew you could kind of get away with no. it? No. Or you're just I just had it. I just had it in me. I was talking about that. It's DNA. My dad was a nut. You know, it's like... It's like but gen- he wasn't a criminal. Yes, he was. Oh, he was. My dad like was... A perf- like an organized crime? No, crime? not a gangster, just a street guy, tough guy. Like what would he do? Uh, armed robbery, shootings, jail time. He did it all. As a career? Yeah. So that's it, you know... In America, at least as far as what you see, yeah, you would think there's not such a thing as like white guys who rob shit right. and all that. I mean, but there is. When I mean, back in the day, the seventies, the eighties, the toughest oh, guys the was the Italians, the Irish, the guys. You know, those, those are lunatics. They were all maniacs coming up. You know what I mean? Killers. You know, they forget it. You know, so um, it was more. I feel like. I was saying it, it's DNA. I was just like my father. My father was a wild, crazy guy, and I was and what too. What happened with him? He, he... he passed away recently, but um, he ended up going to prison. He came home and he went into construction. He didn't want to be a, a street guy no more. And, and did, were you living with him? Yeah, we were together, me, my mom, and dad. Then we, they got divorced. What when, age? Um, they got divorced when I was about eight years old. So you started, so the men you were being around was more so her relatives. Right. My, who were... my grandpa was a criminal as well. Oh, okay. On my mom's side. Okay, we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He died in prison as well. So, yeah. you, you, what, how do you, who has you doing violent stuff when you're 15? Oh, ourselves. Like oh. a group of kids that we were just, you know, bad and, you know, doing fucked up Is shit. like, were, there, were the kids in Howard Beach? Yeah, related. Off and yes. Fighting each so other? we all, we all knew who's who already, who's related. So we're hanging out with this ones. We're jumping kids. We're beating people up. I caught an assault case with a weapon at like 16. It was uh, me and my uh, brother's son. He was a wise guy with the Gambinos. His name was Louis Sheeta. And we beat some kid up with tools. We got For locked what? up. Yes. Yeah, we had a football fight, and he got tough at the football field, and he got away. And we caught him like two weeks later in the shopping center. We beat him up with tools. <laughs> okay, so you get a criminal record at 16. 15. 15. Yeah. So at that point, uh, what, I mean, does your, do you think your mother... I dropped out of school at 16, basically. You know, Were they, you... She had no control over me. I was just bad. Did she even attack? She she tried. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did she feel bad about how your life turned out? Well, think about it. I... Did she try to keep you away from her criminal relatives? Well, that's hard to. You know what I'm saying? But not not only that, think about what I did. She she tried to do everything for me, and then I turn around, and I sneak out the window. I steal the car. Wait, this is... you weren't poor. No, no. So I sneak out the house. I climb out my window, I steal the car because I want to go out. I fucking and almost what, I almost killed somebody. I flipped him over and he went into a house. I had to, yeah, I almost killed him. So think of what they had to go through. I had to take off. I took off, left the scene, and the guy, thank God, way. survived. 15, he took the plate, got left at the scene. They never found it, thank God. And the car got crushed and that was it. That's, you know, it was just so much chaos. It's a lot, it's almost like, like uh, someone from a bad neighborhood put into... A suburban environment. We're, you know, we, I, I consider us Italian gang members. Yeah. That's how we operated. Yeah. And I hate talking. to say, that's what we were. Yeah. We just maybe uh, talk differently and, you know, we make more money. But at the end of the day, we're just like the gang. We we're operate. Street gang. Yeah, that's what we are. So is that how it, you, know, you graduate from sort of the tough guy thing and then what? A, a maid member takes notice of you? Not, a, not only that, it's just like, you. so picture out of 10... Seven out of ten of your friends, their follows a wise guy, a skipper, they someone's related. Really like that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Everybody's related. Everyone's this, everyone's that. Everyone's got, oh, I'm trying to be a bookie. I'm trying to get a half sheet. Oh, I want to do sports betting. You know, everyone's, that's how the neighborhood was. And then um, me and my partner, Bobby, when we got older, we liked to steal arm robbery. So me and Bobby got into the arm robbery. That was your first crime, major crime? Me and Bobby what, were into the stick ups. Uh, 18. Who, who put it in your head to, I mean, armed robbery is a serious... Well, we wanted to make real money. We, we, we grew up so fast. We're like 18, we're like we're 30, really. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we grew up so fast. We don't want to make 500 dollars. We want thousands. You know what I'm saying? We want... Ro- everybody's wearing Rolexes and chains and nice cars. It's 16, 17, 18 years old over there. So, you know, everybody's trying to keep up. You know? So we got into um, scores. And people or residents? Everything. 
Like, were you targeting, like, drug dealers? Drug dealers. Specifically drug dealers and what we were targeting, jewelry stores. And what kind of, like, drug dealers in that neighborhood? Oh, yeah, anywhere. Anywhere we got tips. Now, weren't a lot, if they were part of your social milieu of Italian Wise or, guy, or whatever, well, but they had to be connected. They to can't be. protect drug dealers. That's the whole thing. Oh. Wise guys can't protect drug dealers. Oh, They'll take the money from you and say they do, but they can't protect them, really. Oh, that's interesting. Can't bring drugs to the table. They can't go to a sit-down. Oh. They lie and say, oh, they'll try to make it a lie. Like, oh, it's loan money. No, it's drug money, motherfucker. Like, don't try that. Oh, can't protect drug money. Can't protect. can't protect drug dealers. So it's open season on them. Even if they're hanging out with... Open whoever. season on them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, and, and they probably learn, find that out the hard way. Well, some of them are tough guys, and, you know, it ain't going to be just, you know, roll over. Oh. I had one put money on my head, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's, there's ones that, you know. So what was your first successful one uh, as far as a drug dealer? Uh, me and Bobby got a guy for like a thousand pills of ecstasy. That was big back then. The back then, their pills were still going for, what, 15 20 dollars? a pop, yeah. So that was big for me and Bobby. How'd yeah. that whole thing get set up? Oh, uh, basically, we had a kid in Drugs, tell them to bring it to us, say we want to buy it. Um, we had a bunch of singles, you know, made it look like it was a lot of money in rubber bands when he got in, so we could see the money, and we put the gun to him and took it. Was and he was the it. youngest guy? He was probably 20-something years old. And who was he, just? Some jerk off from Long Island. Oh, he wasn't yeah. even? Nah, just some a victim. Someone yeah. trying to beat yeah. him up and sell him Yeah, drugs. yeah, so he was sick, he got hit for a thousand ecstasy pills, which is nice, you know? Yeah, easy lick. Yeah, he's like. did you go up from there? Um, we went from just now people know us as those kind of guys. So guys that want to make money, they'll come to us and go, yo, I got a score. And that's it. Boom. Then we started getting a little team. And then before you know it, we're sticking up a social club. That's where we fucked up. Oh, that, we crossed the line. That's a little bit different. Yeah, we crossed the line. Well, he, we didn't go into the club. We got a guy coming out of the club. Who was he? Oh, God. So we fucked up. And I tell this story a lot. Um, we, we should have been killed. Um, you ever hear John Gotti's right hand man? Quack, quack. Yeah. His, son, his son's place. The one who was on the wire tape. So his, his family's place. Yeah. And we pissed up the guy. His got, son? His was son, he made at the time? No, not his. Well, matter, but still. His son's guy. guy. Son. Yeah, I, and I got along with him. He's a tough, legit tough guy, Junior Ruggiero. And um, we didn't know it was his place. We, we, we got the score. We knew it was a card game. We didn't know whose place it was exactly. It turned out to be a fucking... Wouldn't you have assumed it had to be something? We thought it was some half-ass jerk-off. We didn't really care. And then my partner's brother set it up. He's in the card game. He goes, yo, the first place guy is coming out with 50000 But it just so happened the guy that won had an $80,000 masterpiece Rolex on. So you got an extra... $30,000 Yeah. So we're 20 years old. I'm like, all right, let's go. And we fucking nailed it. I pissed the whipped him. Got the stuff. Wait, it gets worse. The next morning, my guy I worked for, Ronnie Gialonzo, was banging at my door. And you already, what, what age are you at this point? 20. So you already, how'd you get hooked up with Ronnie G? To his nephew, Bobby. So this, at this point, are you officially working for yeah, him? Yeah, I'm on record him? with him. Yeah, I'm officially on record with the Queens well, faction. So did he know you were going to do that? No. Aren't, was If you're on record, are they supposed to know everything you're yeah. doing? Yeah, because you can get because now think about this. We just did it to the Gambinos. They can think that the Bonanno sent us over there to do that. You can start a fucking war. Yeah. So you know it was a really bad situation, and um, I end up having to give everything. What did Ronnie G say when he comes? Oh, he went ballistic on me because um, he goes, "Did you do anything last night?" I says, "Nah." What are you talking about? He goes, "Do me a favor, turn around, go the fuck upstairs, give me the money and the watch." He goes, "You were on camera. You're dumb." Well, he goes, "Wait for my phone call. Let me see if I could save you." You know so what? you gave him the money and the watch. Well, what we, my end. I gave him my end. Bobby had to give him his end. We had to give him everything back. And um, and then all of a sudden, uh, we had to go meet them in a funeral parlor basement. Oh, you think they were seeing where your heart was at? They're scaring you. Yeah. Tactics. That's what they do. They always make you meet in fucked up places to see if... And sometimes they do kill you. Yeah, and you know, it was scary. I was the killing was still going on. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was nervous. And you know... Um, I says, Bobby, we fucked up, man. And I pissed whip the guy. And that's probably That's scary. bad, yeah. And um, you I just took it. And I, I fucked, because he, at first he hesitated, and I smacked him with the fucking gun. And that was the problem. And um, I ended up getting a little beaten, you know, from, from my own people. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie gave me a little beat to save me. Because it could have been, they could have X in my head. And he'd have to serve me up. 
But, and plus, he wanted to save his nephew. It's his brother's kid, so he's not going to serve up his nephew. Yeah. So I knew we were gonna, me and Bobby got a little cracked around. And then he says, no more of this shit. If you're going to do something, let me know. I, 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 I. He started flipping out. Was he a pretty uh, frightening guy? Very tough guy. Um, but Are any made members, maybe not now, but in your area, where if a guy was made, they were all fairly intimidating. Not always. Some of them get into money, you know, but... But um, they hit well... You but, knew they had somebody yes, that would come Yes, in. yes, you knew they had somebody. So they, were they had guys like me. Day. Think about yeah. guys like how I was. They had guys like me, you know and what I'm saying? the scary thing is you don't know how many guys like you they got. Exactly. They, you might know, okay. See, the 90s, them, but- the 90s era, my cousin Johnny Boy's era, he was killed. That era was so bad. From like 90 to like 98 was so bad in organized crime. There was people getting killed left and right. Yeah, people don't know. There were, in, in New York City, I well, mean, it wasn't all just... It was the Wild Wild people West. Killed. There no, was mafia. dozens of Italians every year. The Columbo War, 17 people were killed and 30 were shot. This is just from one family. And that was in just a space of what, 18 months or something? Yeah. yeah. They were carrying grenades. You yeah. know, so like I said, Italians, were, we were lunatics. And then in my cousin's era, my cousin had four bodies at 20 years old. And he wasn't me. He was gonna be. He got killed at 22. And he would have been a banana. Oh, Gambino. He was with the, he was with John Jr. in them. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he ran with Charles Canigli and John Jr. and all of them. Yeah. So your 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 guy comes and gets you. You're taken yeah. to the basement of the funeral park. Yeah, with the Gambinos there. Did right. That slow you. Okay, so you take a little beating. You give the money back. Did that stop you from robberies? No. Not at all. Not at all. You feel like you were like an adrenaline junkie? Yes, yes. we were. We were. Me and my partner were doing a lot of. We were by my partner's um, uh, girlfriend's building, and um, it's in Far Rockaway. It's kind of like a bad neighborhood, and some black kid tried to uh, rob us with a knife. We're carrying pistols. They, we look like regular white people. Yeah. We're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turned out bad for him. We left him in a fucking puddle of blood. We left him for dead almost, basically. He tried to take our sneakers, everything, with a knife. Not realizing we got guns on us and weapons. We, Bobby G cut it. Your generation would have been the first one that was probably starting more to interact with... Black and Hispanic, yes. Latin kids. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. What yeah. was? Did you rob any black or Hispanic guys? Uh, or? sure. We used to hit drug. De- we, we when I got older, we were hitting drug dealers uh, of any. Uh, you know. And how would you get a lot of them? You had. So I had a, a friend of mine, friend? friend of mine named Ronnie Manns. He was a real known tough guy. He was older, and he was a big crack dealer, mm-hmm. and um, a known uh, Woodhay, uh, uh, Jamaica Avenue. But he was hang out with everybody. He did a lot of jail time. He was older. He was good friends with my cousin Johnny Boy. Me and him hooked up. Black guy? White no, guy? white guy. Irish guy. Oh, selling crack? Oh, he had a crack route. Yeah, and he was holding shit down in the bad areas. He oh, was one of those guys. So um, he was like, listen, he likes to do scores as well. And he's like, we started robbing. And this is what, 01? No, 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 this was 2011. Oh, this ain't that long ago. No, this is 2011. That's when I started robbing you could say... It's like, they don't show us white crack kingpins on the news. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he was. You know, we were robbing any as a C. We didn't care. Spanish, black, whoever had it, we were taking it. And like, in what amounts? Oh, we were hitting oh, 100,000 cash. We were getting sometimes bricks. We were getting it coming off. But, you know, some of these guys are not taking that. You know what I'm saying? Some of them are, you know, looking to, to get back at you. So did you, 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 who put the money under there? Uh, this kid, A.D., we, but we terrorized him. And, and who uh, was he? He was a big drug dealer. He's like a Spanish kid out of uh, um, uh, Ozone Park. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we got him for a lot. Yeah, and we got him for a lot of money and, and drugs. And, and remember, I'm a full-blown known ma- ma- mafia guy. A lot of people were terrified of me at the time. And I got word, Ronnie Manns, that they put 50K on our head. So we found out he was at oh, a strip. A.D. put the 50 in so that's what he told somebody, he got back to us. So now when we hear something like that, you yeah, have to take that seriously. Oh, yeah. So we confronted the situation right away at a strip club where we put pistols out on him, dragged him outside and put him in the car and made him shit himself and told him, we ever hear something like this again and you'll be left in this motherfucker. And this is at the time when New York's crime had gone down a lot. So I mean, yeah. 2012, so you, relative for what was going on in New York, we were still you were really out of control. Because well, yeah. in, in the 90s, this type of stuff was right, happening. Right. Yeah. But in 2012, there wasn't that much of no. that going on. We were still doing it, yeah. So that, that was the problem. That's what the FBI. The well, that's what the FBI said. You know, you fucking doing old school shit. You know, in fucking 2012, 2013, you're still running around like it's, you know. What were you doing with the, if you're, okay, were you kicking up money to Ronnie G? So, no, Ronnie was a multimillionaire. So, but he would want a taste of some things. I more or less helped Vinny out, Asaro. The legend guy, you know, he was part of Latanza Heist, right? Okay, okay, so tell yeah. us about Ronnie G. So Ronnie G. Alonzo was serving time 
in uh, 2006 to 2000. You already uh, knew him from the neighborhood? Ronnie? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. From a kid. Yeah. So, but I'm saying when he was away, I was taking care of everything. Why did he become the one you went on record with? Um, so I told this story. What happened was, this is actually a good one. Um, me and this kid, Chris Cagnata, who was one of the most toughest feared kids around. He's dead now. Uh, somebody killed him. But in 2005, 2004, sorry, 2004, me and him are coming out of a store. And we seen this kid, Phil Galena, who we hate. And uh, Chris bumped him purposely, start with him, that's what he likes to do. Kid Phil thinks he's tough, and Chris cracked a snap bottle over his head. We beat him up. Long story short, we think like it's just regular beef. He goes and pays Albanians 10000 to kill us. Yeah, wait, it gets worse. So we're in a nightclub like three weeks later, and he walks in with two guys. So we're just thinking he's had his fucked up head. We have no idea he's IDing us. Oh, to the hitman? To the fucking guys. I'm in here, me and my regular friends. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, me, Chris Cagnata, Frankie Rock, he's passed away too, my good friend. Joe DeGangi, my friend Danny Crocker, and Billy Dublin. So, Billy Dublin's a street dude too, but most of the part... Um, regular. Regular, but so, we leave the club, and we hop into my friend's Audi. Now, we're packed in because Frankie Rock had to leave early. So, we all hop into this Audi, my friend's Audi. So, we're driving on the highway, all of a sudden, a fucking CLK two-door pulls up next to us and fires eight shots into the car. Shoots my friend to the neck. Shoots my friend Billy to the back. Or oh yeah, there they was there was the kids. It was the guys' ideas. Oh, they fucking right them too. They fucking lit the car up. I'm looking at the fire, literally looking at it. It was, must have just passed my fucking head. Wow. Shot my friend through the neck. Shot my other friend in the back. I knew it was. We knew it came from him. The next day he's in Italy, because you realize you don't get the targets. He took off. Wow. So now I go. His father was a made guy with the Gambinos, but his father got deported to Italy for the pizza connection. So I went to my Gambino guys because I'm born Gambino. Oh. It's a big thing. So I went to them and I said, listen, I'm killing this kid. I want... Oh, oh your, fam your family's Gambino. I'm your supposed to be Gambino. Family. I'm supposed to be... My bloodline's Gambino. I went to these guys, Al Trucchio, Ronnie One, I'm son. These are all known guys. And I said, listen, I'm killing this guy. When he comes back where he is, I'm killing him. I'm letting you know that right now. They're like, no, no guns, no that bullshit. So I said, right, I see where these guys are going. They're protecting him. I went to Ronnie and them. They says, green light, do whatever you want. We got your back. Mm. So that's really what determined me to really go that way. Because I was floating. I was in the middle. So, if... If if Alan would have said, yeah, you know, I would have stood with them, with my bloodline. So, but by... By, the by them being working like... For, for, for who you did, if you would have ended up doing something to those guys, he would have protected you from right. repercussions right. of higher up. Well, he, well, they knew the situation. And Ronnie well, it's goes... Still all it's based on violence. Based on violence. You gotta understand Yeah. That. So, I ended up... He wouldn't, he wouldn't, um, he was hiding. So I told Ronnie what I was going to do. I went to his house with a Tech 9. I put 30 shots into his house with everybody in it. I came back two weeks later. I did this it. This is in a residential. Howard Beach, a mansion. He lives in a mansion. I did, uh, he's a rich, family's rich, filthy Where's rich. Where's the police? Oh, they came later on, I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> I uh, went back there again. But I, nobody talks. No. Went back there again. I did it again. Went back there again, set all his cars oh, wait, on fire. So it's a, even though that's a, reg, a seemingly regular suburban neighborhood, which we've, we've said right. it's not. Right. But still, there's not even neighbors that'll be like, oh, someone had a machine gun. I'm sure there will, but, you know, no one's going to talk and say who it was. Oh. We were trying to get this kid so bad that my cousin Joey stole a camper van. You know those big camper yeah, vans? Yeah. We were camped out in front of his house we're waiting for him. Trying to kill this motherfucker. Well, yeah, he tried to kill him. Yeah, so they they went they went to that level. So now we're going to that level. Yeah. You know, it was just a bottle over your head. You know, me fight a little something. You went. Now you're trying to kill. All right. Oh yeah, they shot at you. Yeah. So now they're playing a new ball game, and that's how I determined going to the banana family because they wouldn't take they would like wouldn't take my back on it. So Ronnie and them says, "Do what you got to do. We got you back." 